And I'm here to argue that being stuck is a good thing. Welcome to the QuickCast. Sometimes the resistance to even using the word stuck is so significant that the mental gymnastics we do to get around this idea of the fact that we're stalled in the book are so stressful, right? It's like, no, I can't be, I can't, I, can't, it's, I don't want to be stuck. I was, it's, it's okay though. It's okay. Stuck is a problem we can solve. When you think being stuck is a bad thing, the way that you attack it as a problem becomes similar to the way you attack all problems that you don't like. You want it to not happen anymore. You're trying to stop it from even occurring. And I'm here to argue that being stuck is a good thing, that being stalled in the writing process can be really beneficial. And if we can just use it for what it's worth, we can write better books. There used to be this way we would discuss writer's block in the writing community, and it is still there. It's still very much there. But what we see now is more often um, writer's block doesn't exist. You're just being dramatic about it, which is understandable in an industry that worships productivity. Um, But if we do not worship productivity, then we need to think about writer's block or about being stuck in a different way, especially because more than 50% of us, 58% to be specific, but more than 50% of us have a dominant personality trait that makes us get stuck consistently and stuck in a way that is beneficial potentially for the story, stuck in a way that is good for us. But we are so consumed with this idea that we shouldn't be stuck, that if we are stalled at all, that there's something wrong with us, that we clearly are a bad writer or whatever. But what you see in people who have fully assimilated the fact that just getting stuck is just a part of their process is they don't have the mental friction anymore about the judgment. Like I'm such a bad writer or I'm so bad at this or clearly I'm not really a professional if I'm getting stuck Uh, because the reality is that personality trait, the dominant one that I always quote that 58% is called intellection and it is in the Clifton strengths metric and the core of intellection is thinking. It is all about let's process over and over again until we can find some level of clarity. And it is primarily about the taking into account how I would think about it from several different angles or trying to understand something on a deeper level or trying to seek more clarity. So all of those things are really beneficial, good things to do, seeking clarity, understanding, being thoughtful, et cetera. But for some reason, when it comes to books, we put the brakes on the helpfulness of thinking and we are judging ourselves and we're constantly trying to not be stuck or to have these machinations around, well, if I can just do this outlining, then I won't be stuck. And me as a success coach for writers, I'm constantly like, no, 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 just be stuck. Let yourself be there and then have tools to get yourself out of it. So today we're going to talk about the tools to get ourselves out of being stuck. If you can just reach for the tool at the right time, then there is no danger to being stuck at all because we are now working on getting ourselves out of the place of stuckness. So let's reach for the tools And we're going to talk about a couple of them today and why they work. So hopefully you can replicate those in your own experience. The first tool, some of you will not like this, but the first tool is serendipity, randomness. There used to be this book that I had and before I moved, I used to actually have the little block on my desk and it was called the writer's block. There's also a tool called the 3am epiphany that does something similar to this. Um, There are all kinds of random generators of things out there. You can also use dice. If you have dice Uh, on our Patreon, one of the things we made was uh, roll tables for different things that would get you unstuck um, in in your writing. And I'll put the link to uh, one of those here in case you want to look at it. You can make your own. I'm a huge fan of them. Um, But roll tables or the writer's block or the 3 a.m. epiphany or a random generator, there is something about our brain's need for clarity 
that when we are faced with something random that we have to assimilate into the story, we can get ourselves unstuck just by the mere presence of the random information. And it's because the storytelling mechanism inside is trying to create a reason for this random thing to exist, or we're trying to create framework or structure around this random thing. And by doing that, we are allowing ourselves to take advantage of thinking around, right? Like having the perspective and thinking differently about something. And that can be the biggest benefit ever for us as writers, because we're trying to think differently than we were thinking before. We aren't just giving ourselves the same information. The reason I liked the writer's block tool so much, and let me just describe what it was, because you can still buy them, I think, on Amazon, but it's a little uh, square block book that's like a board book, basically. Um, and it has, I think, 300 pages in it or something. And you would basically just flip through it until you would land on something random and you would open it and it would say, um, have one of your characters yell, ouch. And then that's what you're supposed to write next um, in the text. And the reason I'm such a fan of serendipity as a tool when it comes to getting unstuck is because if you consider the fact that your brain already knows the story and what you're basically doing is thinking around it to try and discover the story, um, then the serendipity forces you to remember parts of the story that you have either sublimated or forgotten um, in order to in incorporate this random thing. If you are creating the story as you go and you are not subconsciously already knowing the story, which there are different types of writers, um, it gives you the opportunity to say yes or no to that thing based on whether or not it's going to serve where you want to go in the future. And then that can help you to jump over to the other side of the stuck block. Um, so huge, huge fan of, of serendipity. Again, I, I love the roll tables. We'll link one of them um, for you to just have in the in the show notes. And so the randomness would be one tool. And some of you are not also not going to like this because many of us are introverts, but someone else's opinion is the second tool. And so many of us, we don't like talking about the story because it creates a lot of stress and pressure for us to have to verbally communicate about what's going on in the story. But if you are dominant in intellection, intellection needs pressure in order to continue moving through a story. And so if you are not on deadline, which can create pressure for the intellection to create make forward motion happen, um, then we need to create some other kind of pressure. And so often verbally discussing the story is going to make us have pressure that will cause to move forward. So when you think about um, either the randomness, which creates uh, a perspective, potential perspective, or the talking with someone or asking for someone's opinion or brainstorming with someone that can create pressure. Um, those two causes of getting unstuck are often part of all the other tools that we might use. But the reason I wanted to talk about those two in particular is I and, and I, I now have our stuck list deck, um, our author stuck list deck on my desk. So when I get stuck, I now immediately reach for that. But before when I had this little writer's block book, which I still, I think it's such an amazing tool, um, that writer's block book, you could just flip through it and then immediately you would start making progress. And so often the longer we are stuck, the harder it becomes to get to progress. And so having that perspective is so often the thing that will help us to move forward. And if it isn't, then pressure can help. So perspective and pressure, the two main tools that I see being effective in helping authors get unstuck. So I wanted to just take a minute and discuss both of those in this quick cast episode because We've been talking a lot about being stuck lately. I have a book that is coming out about it uh, called The Author Stuck List. And it's one of the primary reasons that people have come to us over the years for getting coaching is because we've just dealt with so many different variations of authors being stuck. And the reason I started off this quick cast with the insistence that it's possible that being stuck could be helpful is because I have seen over the years of coaching, and I've coached more than 6,000 people at this point in my career, more than 6,000 authors. 
I have seen over years of coaching stories get better because we embraced the stuck point. I have seen character arcs get deeper. I have seen entire storylines change for the better. I have seen plot points come out of nowhere specifically because we were stuck. If we expect that every single part of our writing process will have no friction, like none whatsoever, we are going to be disappointed in the process. And my goal for us is always to feel good about the process of writing. And so often, if we would just accept the fact that we regularly get stuck and reach for the tool that we need to have, then we will be better at getting ourselves unstuck. We'll spend less time in that place where we're not making words and we'll potentially make the books better. So if you could do just one thing for me, those of you who consistently Consistently get stuck in your manuscripts instead of the next time, instead of thinking, oh, I'm so bad. I'm such a bad writer. I'm so stupid. Why can't I just make progress? I want you to think, yeah, good job, brain. Like clearly there's a reason we need to be stopped right now. Let's go figure out what it is. The difference between those two attitudes is often the difference between quickly moving out of the stuck place and not moving out of it. And that's why I encourage you to have tools available on your desk or near you or in your notebook or wherever to have tools available that you can quickly reach for. Because too often we stop when we're stuck and we start to wonder why we're stuck and we ask questions and we start to circle around and we start to think when what we should be doing is reaching as quickly as we can for a tool. Or like the 3 a.m. epiphany could just sit on top of your desk or again that cute little writer's block you know, little square book. It was so easy to just grab that thing and get unstuck. And I still feel like that serendipity led to some of the better plot twists, some of the better character arcs, some of the better rewrites that have ever happened in my career. And I want us to as quickly as possible, start reaching for tools when we get unstuck and to see the process of being stuck as a beneficial thing. And that's a mindset shift I know for some of us, but I promise you being stuck can be a really good thing. And not just because you have intellection, there may be, may be other strengths that cause this. Strategic is a common cause of this. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Clifton Strengths metric, I highly encourage you to go to gallup.com and take the test. I think it is the best way to determine how my brain works and to be able to understand why my brain makes the decisions that it makes. Because even just knowing I'm a dominant intellection, even just knowing, hey, I need to think to find clarity. I need to keep processing something until I feel like I understand it. That gives me the freedom to give my brain what it needs in order to get to the next point in the book. And the less friction we can experience, the more quickly we can get back to the writing and creating all these worlds that we want to create. So have tools. Again, I'm going to suggest something that is serendipity related and some person or place that you can quickly contact if you need to talk about it. And if the serendipity doesn't work, talk about it. And again, introverts, I know, I know it's not exciting, but I still think that we need to talk more often um, to create that pressure. And, and it will be painful for some of us, right? I'm not saying it won't be, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be painful. Sometimes it should be painful. Sometimes what you have to prepare the person you're talking to for is, yeah, I, I apologize. I may not be clear. Please hang with me. I may not be able to get the words out correctly, and I may shoot down everything that you say but that's not about you. That's me. That's my stuff. And I apologize for being this way. You don't have to apologize, but Becca does. Um, I apologize that I can't just do this in an easy way, but I so appreciate you taking the time to do this with me because you're helping me just by being here and talking to me about this and then talk to them about it. And you may shoot down everything that they say. You may not take any of their advice, but that's not why they're there. They're not there to fix your manuscript. They are not your editor. They're not your agent. They are a brainstorming partner, a beta reader, or a friend, or a fellow author. They are there to help provide pressure for you to talk through where you're stuck so that you can hear yourself talk about it. So anyway, I digress. Serendipity, pressure. 
of some kind, right? Just talk to people. I know, I know, I know. It's okay. You're going to ignore me anyway if you don't want to do it. So I'm okay. But just know that sometimes even in election dominant people need that level of pressure. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here and listening to the quick cast today. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you will join our newsletter if you have not yet done that. Uh, We do coaching questions every week, a Dear Becca letter that gets submitted by someone who has a question. We regularly talk about writer's block and being stuck because it's one of the problems that writers deal with frequently. Um, And so I hope that you'll join us and pick some of those letters up and I hope they will be helpful for you. All right, everyone. We'll see you on the next quick cast.